Video games just love trying to be smart. Directors such as Hideo Kojima and David Cage practically made their names crafting dense, intellectual, surprising stories that didn't treat the player like an idiot, really authoring the game around storytelling and using this investment to deliver genuinely jaw-dropping twists and turns along the way. These shocks need to be earned though, you can't just throw in the fact that it's been a dog in space controlling the player the whole time without any foreshadowing and then expect it to work, and that means putting in the legwork throughout the entire story. Fortunately, when this is done properly, it results in plot twists that were actually subtly telegraphed way before they happened, which make you feel like a bit of an idiot when they're finally revealed. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 8 video game plot twists that were hiding in plain sight. Number 8. Naomi Hunter and Grey Fox share the same last name, Metal Gear Solid. A franchise so packed with twists and turns that it shows up twice on this list, the original Metal Gear Solid gave fans a taste of the kind of cinematic storytelling that video games could offer. Though the most famous reveal is the one concerning Liquid impersonating Master Miller, there are so many more that surround it from Snake being set up by his own government to members of his team of advisors joining the mission with ulterior motives. It's that last part that's the focus of this entry, however, as geneticist Naomi Hunter is revealed revealed to hate Solid Snake for killing her adopted brother Frank Yeager, otherwise known as Grey Fox, during the previous game. It's just one part of telling the player that they can't trust anyone, even those that are apparently there to assist them, but the connection between Naomi and Frank is actually spelled out right from the get-go. Well, if you can speak German anyway. That's because Jaeger translates from German to English as Hunter, revealing that both Frank and Naomi share a surname and thus must be connected somehow. Number 7. Jack being Andrew Ryan's son is teased in an audio diary, Bioshock. The original Bioshock is full of ridiculous plot twists, one of which reveals that the player character Jack isn't just a random casualty of a plane accident who found himself in an even worse situation at the bottom of the ocean, but rather that he's intrinsically linked to one of the game's major players, Andrew Ryan. Ryan was the founder of Rapture, the underwater utopia that the player finds themselves in, and Jack was his illegitimate son, artificially aged up to do the bidding of Ryan's nemesis, Frank Fontaine. It's a reveal that comes late in the game, but it can actually be spoiled quite early on by the bathospheres. These contraptions are used to get around the city quickly, but when everything went to hell, Ryan locked them down, and only his genetic code being registered can actually activate them again. Though it's quite a big twist, this security detail is actually talked about early on in an audio diary, where the security chief states, quote, sisters, cousins, anyone in the ballpark genetically will be able to come and go as they see fit. So, while this line of dialogue doesn't outright give away that Jack is Ryan's son, it does reveal again that there's a connection between them, long before the story ever actually acknowledges it. Number 6. Roland's death is literally spelled out at the start, Borderlands 2. Roland's death in Borderlands 2 offers a surprising emotional peak for a game that is otherwise primarily concerned with giving players ridiculous weapons of mass destruction and dropping as many knob gags into the story as possible. Handsome Jack shoots him in the back, which is just lovely to say by the way, in a genuinely shocking moment towards the end of the game, but his untimely demise had actually been signposted long before that. In fact, it's right there in giant letters the very first time you meet him. During his introduction, Roland is sat on the bed of his cell as he talks to the player, and on the wall right behind him, in gigantic letters no less, are the words, you die, written in an ominous red. I mean, it doesn't really get any more obvious than that, does it? We all, we all totally should have guessed this. Number 5. Josh dies no matter what you do, until dawn. Until Dawn's loving ode to the horror genre hides twists within twists, but perhaps the biggest is that Josh, who seemingly dies early on in the game, is the one who orchestrated a night of terror for his so-called friends. Though you might have a sneaking suspicion that one of them might be in on it, as is Slasher Convention, the game attempts to throw you off the scent while simultaneously giving away the twist that Josh is responsible. At one point early on in the title, you encounter one of the game's branching choices. Josh and Ashley are hooked up to a soul-like trap, and you have to choose who gets the chop. However, no matter who you choose, it's Josh who ends up with his, later revealed to be fake, guts on display. 
If you choose him, you'd have no idea anything was off about the choice. And even if you didn't, you might have just chalked it up to being a sick joke on behalf of whoever set this trap up in the first place to kill the person that you thought you were saving. It's later revealed that Josh didn't die at all though, but simply rigged the trap to make it look like he did to sell the horror to everyone else. In fact, he never put any of them in any real danger. It was the Wendy goes doing all the actual murdering. He just used his own apparent demise to make them think they were all being hunted. Number four, Clearface is pretending to be the Joker, Batman Arkham City. Another classic case of mistaken identity, the bulk of Arkham City focuses on the Joker and Batman suffering from a disease caused by the clown Prince of Crime's self-induced monster mutation in the original game. However, the latter's apparent renewed health after a blood transfusion is revealed to have been nothing more than a massive lie to prompt Batman to find a proper cure. In the final act, his true appearance is revealed, and he's shown to be completely decrepit, barely able to stand, and completely ravished by this disease. So the question remains, who was the seemingly healthy Joker that you'd been interacting so much with before then? Well, it's revealed that Clayface has been acting on his behalf, impersonating old Puddin to not give the game away. If you were paying attention during any prior interaction with the man formerly known as the Joker though, you would have figured out this twist pretty much straight away. By using Bats' detective vision, you can see a person's skeleton and vital signs. But all the way through the game, the Joker has no skeleton. This isn't a simple glitch or an error either, but confirmation that what you're actually looking at is the boneless body of Clayface. Hell, the series even draws attention to this detail in the original game, where once again Clayface has no skeleton in detective mode. Number three, Alice is an android. Detroit become human. For the most part, Detroit Become Human is about as subtle as a sledgehammer to the bollocks. While the plot itself is still enjoyable, it wears such obvious symbolism and foreshadowing on its sleeve, all with the exception of one key twist. The fact that the young girl android Kara is protecting is also a machine. The revelation that this child, Alice, isn't human comes right before the climax. But the team at Quantic Dream, another delicious rhyme by the way, included so many hints towards her true nature before then that upon replaying the game, it becomes just as signposted as anything else. For one, when you find a picture of Alice's family in her room, it shows her, her father, and her mother. But the child's features are all slightly off, especially her hair. The suggestion is that the real Alice is in the photo and not the machine her dad bought to replace her. On top of this is the fact that the advertisements for Android children and their affordability are mentioned a few too many times. And some characters simply refer to Alice as it, all hinting towards the reveal that she isn't human. Number two, Venom Snake is a big boss body double, Metal Gear Solid V. The one thing the entirety of Metal Gear Solid V's fragmented plot is building towards is the reveal that the man you think you are, that is, the legendary soldier Big Boss, isn't who you've been playing as for the past 50 hours. The final cutscene shows that despite having his face and taking his place in the public eye, you've been nothing more than a pawn for the real Big Boss, who has been accomplishing his own dastardly deeds behind the scenes while all eyes were on you. It's supposed to be this grand reveal that makes everything else in the narrative click into place. But there were so many hints in there beforehand that the most diehard fans actually figured out the twist before the game itself had even released. Because with all the information at your disposal, it's pretty easy to figure out that there are two big bosses. For one, there's two characters, including the player character, voiced by Kiefer Sutherland. One of which is constantly dropping quips and informs you how essential it is to heal yourself during battle, which the real big boss would know after MGS3. Yeah, that's kind of vague enough, maybe, but the real kicker here is how many times the people you interact with simply don't recognize you, despite the fact that you're one of the most famous war heroes in the entire world. And all this isn't even to mention the fact that he's not even called Big Boss, but rather Venom Snake. Number one, 
Kratos' wife has been guiding him the whole time, God of War. In one of the loveliest video game plot twists of the generation, one which serves to add emotional heft to the rest of the experience that came before it, rather than deliver a shocking top 10 anime betrayal, one of the final tidbits before God of War's narrative closes out reveals that both the player and Kratos have been unknowingly guided by a familiar figure the whole time. Though Kratos' wife Faye dies before the title even begins, she actually marked out the entire journey for him and son Atreus to go on before her demise. And I don't mean that figuratively either, like she knew in advance that they were destined to go on this mythological quest, but rather that their path to success throughout the world was literally guided by her own hand. As a lot of adventure games are wont to do, God of War features a visual signifier to let you know which part of the landscape is traversable and where you can climb. This comes in the form of a gold paint that highlights part of the environment that you can interact with. Unlike other games though, here there's a reason for the gold signifier. It's been placed there by Faye to guide Atreus and Kratos. As the title's director Cory Barlog put it, she was there every step of the way. She walked that path before they ever did. Now, isn't that just lovely?